Thank you very much for your company and welcome again to your channel Transmission Lines Engineering TV. The nature of this channel is basically addressed to technical aspects related to the engineering required for a transmission line project. However, there are other aspects or administrative disciplines which uh, also play a key role in the development of the project. And in fact, in order to carry out the detailed engineering of uh, the line, it is required the interaction with other areas such as purchases and contracts. So let's talk about these areas. As number one, of course, we have the discipline of transmission lines engineering. This discipline will be the responsible for the development of uh, numerical calculations such as uh, second tensions, structure spotting, uh, quantification and technical evaluation of materials, in addition to the development of uh, electrical issues such as uh, phasing and transposition if they are required, communications by means of uh, optical fiber or the development of uh, ground systems, among many other subjects that we'll, we will talk about, about them in later uh, videos and on online training courses. As a number two component, we have uh, the substations engineering team. A transmission line cannot be designed without the constant communications with the substations team. Both disciplines uh, depend on each other and between them uh, they will uh, make the correct connections in between both infrastructures and in order to achieve correctly. The substations team will be in charge of the sizing of the transformation and measurement equipment, but especially the facing and connection frames with the transmission line. The importance of this uh, discipline is based on the, um, on the location of the departure and arrival structures to the substations, which uh, must be well coordinated in such a way that the frames of the substations are not subject to excessive vertical loads to the, the weight of uh, conductors and longitudinal due to uh, conductors' tensions and try to avoid horizontal loads to the deflections of the cables with respect to the uh, connection of the A-frames since sometimes the down leads to the measurement equipment, uh, the TPs and TCs, uh, induce transversal loadings to these equipment, putting at risk the mechanical stability and electrical operations. On the other hand, the facing on the structures should be in such a way to coincide with the facing sequence on the substation frames. Another topic here of coordination are the OPGW connections with the location of the optical splice boxes and transition to optical fiber dielectric cable ADSS towards the optical distributed equipment inside the control room. And number three component is the construction discipline. Obviously, the construction area is the one which uh, materializes the drawings uh, in a tangible reality. In my opinion, each project has a, a, contains a particular story worthy for a documentary. This is the reason that the engineering areas need to to take a, a constructive support to make sure that the designs we make in our drawings are doable. It means, to mention for, for an example, uh, a 2,000 square millimeters uh, underground cable. This one can be bended very easily in a drawing, but in reality, it's not so easy to make uh, the curvatures on these uh, type of cables. For our fellow builders who are watching this video, will we agree with me that bending these underground cables, it's a science uh, with a certain level of complexity. Another example might be uh, a structure located at the foot of a canyon in our structure spawning drawings. Uh, but 
At the time we verified the location of the structures on site by the builder, this tower might be in danger of having uh, an erosion on the foundations and becoming necessary to relocate it. Or maybe uh, the location of uh, some structures does not allow the position on, of the, uh, the streaming equipment. So whether it is the design of a substation or of a line, the construction disciplines are the engineering eyes. And number four component uh, is procurement. Obviously, to be able to build, uh, it is required materials, equipment, warehouses, and suppliers. Line designers are specialists in materials for lines, but we are not specialists in materials for substations and vice versa. Or purchasing or procurement colleagues they manage the materials purchase and services for both engineering and construction areas. So it is uh, humanly impossible for them to become specialists in materials so sensitive as to delegate them the high responsibility of uh, technically evaluate these goods. Because of this reason, it is very important to provide the buyers with all the necessary support from the engineering team for the management with the suppliers by the purchases areas. The buyer's job is to get the best price for those necessary materials or services. The responsibility of the technical evaluation of the materials offer belongs to the engineering team as well as the attention of the technical question that the suppliers might have. And number five component contracts administration. In the transmission line project, there's a wide variety of uh, contracts. We have the following, for example, construction contracts, which refers to the definition of the scope of work of, uh, or service, uh, both legal and technical. And the engineering areas have the obligation to support the contract administrator in order to develop the technical scopes by describing in detail the corresponding activities, quantities, and applicable specifications. In other words, the design engineer, besides making calculations and designs, must write this section of the contracts uh, and advise the administrator for his complete understanding and execution. In particular, when I give this kind of uh, support for the good understanding and administration of the contract, I usually prefer a presentation in PowerPoint to show the builder the construction sequence and detailed description of the technical section of the contract to make sure the builder has a clear vision of the interpretation of the contract with respect to the work to be developed. Other type of contracts, we have service contracts. Service contracts refer to the equipment lease, uh, warehouses, uh, construction offices, uh, and staff housing, etc. In this type of uh, services, there's no really much that the engineering team can support, but there are other type of services in which it is necessary the support on the engineering areas such as contracts for survey services, either with a total station equipment or LiDAR, or thermal survey of existing lines, or can be external engineering suppliers, what is called outsourcing. The technical section of these contracts must be written by the designer as he's the one who best knows the, the needs of applicable specifications and the needs of the power project. We have as well other type of contracts, materials purchase contracts. This section has two aspects. The, uh, the first one pertaining to national supply materials in which the design engineer must write the technical section of the purchase contract uh, concerning the type of uh, materials required, uh, quality tests, quantities, 
applicable specifications and process inspections during the manufacturing. A second aspect refers to the supply of the materials in questions and in addition to the supply of the detailed engineer related to the materials because sometimes the line design team does not have the necessary technical knowledge of the installation of some materials and it is required to subcontract the supplier's engineering services. In this case, the design engineer must establish in the contract the documents required by the external engineering supplier the criteria for revision and acceptance of calculations and related drawings as well. This model becomes more, much more complex when, uh, when it comes to engineer supplies from other countries where the revision of the documentation has to be done remotely. We have as well contracts with trade unions. Fortunately, today, in most countries, Worker safety is no longer seen as an expense, but as an investment. Trade unions have uh, been commissioned to provide workers with fair, dignified and safe conditions for the workers. To do this, it is always necessary for a transmission line project to have uh, a collective work contract for the large numbers of employees during the construction of the project. Each country will have its very own labor regulations, so it is a healthy practice to know these regulations so that the workers can return safe with their families. And number six uh, component is environment. Since uh, a transmission line spans through a great diversity of a geography, the environmental team should identify those areas with uh, which ecological equilibrium are at risk due to the line construction as both flora and wildlife. The environmental area requires the engineering support to determine if any ecological problem in those points uh, where the uh, structures are located, stringing equipment and materials positioning, including uh, archaeological vestiges. Usually, before starting the transmission line design, the environmental team takes a tour on site to identify those areas that have special requirements, such as uh, prohibited areas or areas where some vertical or horizontal setbacks are required uh, and in the event of the environmental team determines some type of problem with the structure's uh, location, the engineering area must remain in close contact to carry out the corresponding modifications. And number seven component is quality. All participating disciplines, without exceptions, have a very close relationship with the quality assurance team. The quality area will be responsible for compiling all the applicable specifications jointly with the person in charge of each area. Specifically for the engineering area, both areas must work together to develop the quality formats that must be applied by the builders to maintain the quality monitoring of the work. Likewise, the areas must work to generate the quality control formats for the engineering line design. That is, keep a record of the input data of the different required drawings and informations, develop and maintain a process of identification of the documents as well as a control of the modifications made to each document. As for the construction, uh, develop and maintain a process that allows the monitor the changes uh, required during the construction in the as-built and uh, commissioning stages. Number eight, we have permits management. A basic difference between a transmission line substation is that in a substation, the construction problems are reduced to uh, x, to x amount of uh, square meters of construction. 
in the case of a transmission line, it might have from one to a thousand kilometers of line of problems, since uh, line spans all types of uh, geography, communities, climates, uh, societies, and of course, land owners. These properties can be both uh, private uh, residential or public use, such as uh, crossings with, with roads, pipelines, rivers, highways, uh, farming areas with special requirements, including owners to give their permission to, to place uh, structures within their properties. Uh, they have requirements, sometimes very special, and some other times so strange that there is no an specification to satisfy some owner's uh, requirements and in, it is when we, we have to look inside ourselves to find a way to meet these requirements. If uh, some of our viewers who work with uh, work permit management is watching this video, surely they will know what I'm talking about. As for the permits management with third parties crossings, the engineering team has a, a key role because um, it is in charge of developing the drawings, descriptions and all necessary support to the permit team to obtain the crossing approvals. And number nine uh, component is project management. There are many areas necessary for a transmission line project. As uh, we talked about previously, uh, there is an overview of uh, the way in which these uh, areas will interact, but the execution of these communications and the mutual support is a very complex and difficult task to establish and maintain, of course. So the project manager is the responsible for all the areas to communicate with each other besides of uh, financial controls of the project on each uh, area and the direct contact with the customers. A project manager should not necessarily be an expert on each area. He should not be an expert in line designs or an expert in construction maneuvers or purchase of materials. Uh, rather, he must be an expert in organizing times and the communication between teams besides being a good negotiator. Uh, something that I'm used to do and I think it has given me good results in my work to support my project managers is to generate a PowerPoint presentation to show my project manager the construction sequence to help him to have a clear vision of uh, all activities on each stage of the project, uh, which sections uh, must be salvaged and when, which uh, connections must be relocated, which special requirements exist uh, along the line, uh, what will be the internal connections to the substations, which uh, special arrangements for structure spawning are required, is it required for instance position, all these details are data which uh, the engineering team has the obligation to keep the project manager informed to have a better knowledge and monitoring of the works and in this way have a better control of the construction contractors. And number 10 component, biddings. In parallel to the development of the projects in progress, there are others which are in bidding process. The bids team have a very heavy task on their shoulders and it is to get work for all of us and need the unconditional support from the engineering team and this support is to accompany during site visits to inspect the future work site and identify possible design issues uh, geography, access roads, uh, soil tiles for foundations evaluations, as well as pre-engineering or pre-design activities to provide the materials quantities and their types in order to build up an offer as close as possible to the reality. So at the end of the day, as you can see, there are many areas, many activities and a lot of coordinations. And this is what is called 
team work. I take the opportunity to extend an invitation to subscribe to this channel, not only to colleagues and transmission lines, but also to substations people, expressing that all these videos can be helpful for them. Thank you very much for your kind visit. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments on this video. So, on the next one, Transmission Lines Engineering TV, training to power the world.